Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Today's video is about intake manifolds, kinda. It's more about the design or one aspect to look at when choosing an intake manifold, just one. There's a lot of stuff that goes into intake manifolds of picking a good one, and I'm just giving you one piece of knowledge a day. Now today, if you notice, these are all small block Chevys, but you can apply these same principles to other manifolds too. Although in all fairness, the small block Chevy's manifold design looks a lot like a Chrysler because they're that way, um, even so you could use it for that. Um, Pontiacs as well. So there's some other things that are kinda, kinda go together. But anyway, uh, use these principles or not, but I'm just gonna go over really just one aspect. And the aspect that I'm going over today is uh, line of sight or approach angle to the head. And these you can kinda get a better visual representation, so I grabbed a few. So first off, we'll start off with something that I don't think is very good and we'll move on up to things that gets better. And granted, again, these are all small block Chevys. These just happen to be here. Maybe I'll do this with big block Chevys later on. First though, let me show you this. Now remember, I'm not an artist, so bear with me. Um, if you go back in times, because this manifold's very close to these designs, I do not like this manifold, but a customer sent this one in for me to port and we'll get back to talking about that in just a minute. So the two manifolds, which you're probably really going to find at swap meets quite odd, quite regularly, and even um, garage sales if they still do those, and you see stuff that have people have manifolds for sale, or even um, so pretty much anywhere. These are the ones that typically I've seen quite a bit, and I would say just avoid. And these are both from Elderbrock, and they have something called the Torker, and sometimes it's called the Scorpion. I think it was they had a little Scorpion on there, and it's supposed to be the big ticket. Well, if you look at the runners ever, they're like an X design. And it sounds fantastic. Um, and But the problem is the same problem that's with this manifold right here. Um, the, the problem is, is, so the carb would be bolted here. Remember, I'm not an artist. And the carb would be bolted here for this one. So the air comes in and, and it goes this way. So you're like, well, that's a perfect shot right to the carburetor. That part's great. So just looking at it from this standpoint to here is fine. If we were just dealing with the manifold, this would look amazing. And this is the reason why I don't flow manifolds because if you just flowed this manifold by itself, it probably wouldn't look all that bad because it's just, there's no curve in the runner and it's going this way. The problem is the head. So let me grab a pin so I can kind of show you. There we go. Sorry about that. So all these, this would be the flange. Just move like it right. This would be the flange right here for the head. Well, the heads go like this. So that'd be the port entry for each one. So if you look at where the air comes, it goes right into and slams into the wall, slams into the wall. So it's literally making such a hard turn here. So even though by itself, that manifold will flow really, really good, but attached to the head, not so much. Um, that turn is not great. And you could tell by looking at these manifolds, the evolution of how things have changed um, from this initial design. Because if you remember anything from like that Torker or Scorpion 1, they were the it manifold probably in a long, long time ago because it was probably the only one you really could get that was a single plane design. But then things, people were like, well, that didn't seem very smart to have it like that. So they went to different ones. Well, Autobrock then came up with this Torker 2. Now this one's just a little bit change of a design. And like I said, you could find these pretty easy. Matter of fact, my first performance manifold I ever had was a Torker 2 because I thought it was a big, hot ticket. It had to be better than the first Torker, so it's going to be a ticket, right? Well, if you look at this, this is where the head would sit again. So if we look at this line here, that's where the head goes. So if you look from the head standpoint, it lines directly up with it. So actually what happens is it comes straight, but then you have a 90 degree turn here. It goes right into the plenum. 90 degree, all of them are 90 degree. So the air itself, like this turn right here was sucked. So that really hurt it, but then it was straight and then the, the head itself could do its thing. But that part right there made it suck. And I'm telling you this because if you get either one of these manifolds, you can see either one, avoid them. They're not good at all. Um, I'm sure when they first came out, they thought that they were the hot ticket and things have gone away from them. So I would, there's your lesson. I don't have one here, obviously, for the reason, but avoid those two manifolds. But let's talk about this one because it's a really close to this. Now, Edelbrock and also Lion um, competed against each other as far as de developing different manifolds. And this one's much like uh, that Torker or Scorpion. As you can tell, looking at the manifold itself, it comes off at a sharp angle. 
Well, I mean to tell you, um, it's still very sharp angle and it, it's, and I haven't cleaned off the marker here, but you could tell, I mean, it, it's straight there. There's no bend to it. So that by itself, it, it sucks. If I flow the manifold alone, great. But uh, if you're looking at angle of tack, that's what this video is kind of about. All I'm gonna see is the wall. I'm never gonna see the valve. And I granted, even on this high end one, you may not see the valve, but at least I can see further in the port than I ever can with this. I'm just gonna see a wall. Now, the, what made this one a bit unique from the Torker 2, or the Torker, or the Elderbrock one, is because the one, the, the plenum design itself, they actually moved this back, which on high-end manifolds, we actually do this. I put an angle going this way because it's if the runners are straightened, in other words, if I move this runner out and I've got this wall this way, it actually makes my runner straighter here. I don't really know about having it go this way and with it all the way out, but if I had an arc, it's almost perfect. So it's great to have that, not so much. This manifold is also unique because you'll see this line here. There's this metal plate that they shove through here and to make it from a single plane into a dual plane. Now, I have read, used to read tons of magazines and Hot Rod actually did a test on that. And from memory, right, I don't think it did very well. So having that in the act like a dual plane. So the sad part is going back to this, I truly think perform, the dual planes were probably outperforming this deal because single plane by design, the shortness of the runners doesn't make it as well, but then you've got this. So I don't know, some of the dual planes probably were beating this at the time. Anyway, there's that, but let's, let's talk about how it evolved. It all went from this curve here and this is a line of sight, how things kind of changed. Because the idea is to get where the manifold enters the head as straight as possible. That's a perfect line of attack. That's why tunnel rams have it made, because they're entering straight. Now, they might have a little curve on this end to get up towards it, which isn't ideal. But for the most part, it should be straight with a taper that's coming gradually larger as it gets towards the carburetor. Um, Anytime you stray from that straightness, you lose power. So like this is not very good, obviously. And then things moved on. Now these two manifolds, this one came out. This is a Holley uh, Strip Dominator 300 twist 25. This was really popular when I was much younger. But if you notice its runners, it comes straighter a little bit and then starts making the turn. Now this got more of a gradual turn. Um, Darren Morgan often said he would rather have a one small curve instead of this large gigantic curve. And I agree with him, but this is trying to meet with this. So having a approach like this, where you've got your one curve, but it's up here and it's a 90 isn't, isn't ideal. Having it more like this is better. Um, so obviously you could tell how things evolved and it has more of a curve and things got better, especially on this one, because like that one, straight in, right? This one, you could tell it's got a little bit of curve here and it's coming in. This one will always be a harder time to deal with because it's coming into the head um, and it's such a short distance. So this one's at a disadvantage in that aspect because of that. So now this manifold is the Edelbrock Super Victor and you can tell they did the same thing. You can see how it's straighter here then it starts making your turb towards the car, the car pad and they've got more of an arch on the center one. And then that, of course years later they came up with this one which is the Super Victor 2 and if you look at that You've got much more here and much more here. So not nearly as that one is. So you can tell how things evolved. One of the other things is, this is major ma made a major design change itself is the height of them. So probably when these first came out, I bet you, the, you know, cow induction hoods and stuff were in those commons, they're like really worried about hood clearance. So if you keep the carb pad lower, um, you really are limiting yourself by how long you can make the runner because a lot of things make power from the manifold and one of them is runner length. So you have to have a tune for your RPM they're gonna run. Well, if you make the manifold short, you're limited. So the shorter you get it, it can only be so long. You'd have to do something pretty dramatic with a given height to make the runner itself longer. So the shortness of height really hurt it. And then if you look at things, how things have progressed, this has a much taller in, um, height and this one is even way taller as things progressed. Because as I move it up, I can now not only move it this way, it's easier to get the angle better. So one of the other things that also gets it plays into fact is the height. So now you might say, well, what do I do about, what, what's all this mean? 
It means when you're trying to look for a manifold and you don't have any other ideas, well, this is just one aspect looking at line of sight only. Avoid these. I'm telling you, now the customer has to run these for rules, in case you're wondering. But avoid these type and try to get ones. And this really comes up to your hood, hood height. Get the taller one that you have. Um, taller, usually the better. The exception is some of the Brodex ones. And be aware, some other people do this too. They will cast a spacer in. So this part would be, or actually I should say, this part's exactly the same. They just cast a two inch plate on top of it. That does help in a way that the air gives more time from the carb to the runner entry here of the manifold. You get more area to make the turn, which is better, but still the runner is the same length. So ideally you'd want one where the runners are up higher in there. So the taller one gives you a better, usually line of sight, usually better line of sight. So in case you're ever just looking at it, look at it and if you picture the head on her, how much cut of the head can you actually see in there? And in this case, like of course you can't see, you just see a wall. So there's one aspect to look forward to. Now it's one of many, many, many. The other one that probably is the most important and it is, and I'm not doing it on this video so much, but is length. Um, each engine has an operating range that it runs. So a cubic inch and an operating range you you run in really tells you how much of a length of the total induction system you need. Typically, small block Chevys, um, our runner manifolds, our manifold lengths are too short. So like this one's not too bad. It works for most things. I think it's like six and a quarter, but if you look at this one, I think it's like five. It's short, short, short. So the shorter the length, typically the higher RPM it's gonna work. Well, this thing ain't gonna make higher RPM power anyway because the air slams in this anyway. So it's like worse and worse. So high RPM here, can't ever have it. So these are like a good mixture. As you can tell, they have extended dividers in the Super Victor itself um, just to help with the length itself. But length is probably the most critical thing by far. Then the me, line of sight, which is what this video is about. So if you're at a scrapyard or not scrapyard, I guess, and you're trying to determine which one you should buy, first look for line of sight and then height, as long as it clears your hood. So for instance, I love these three manifolds. These ones probably get used the most by me. This one on most of my 383 stuff, uh, 355, love this one. Sometimes I use this one, why? Because this one's a little bit shorter than this. This is actually my favorite one though. So by far, because most people run a 400 or bigger inch cubic engine. This is the 2892, the Super Victor 2. By far my favorite for a 4150 carburetor. All these are 4150s, by the way. By far my favorite manifold because it's got the height, it's got the runner length. It's really nice. So I do port work and I open this up, it's a thing of beauty. So one of my favorite ones by far. But many people are like, I can't get that underneath my hood. And that's when these two come into play. Well, some of you are gonna say, well, what happens if you can't get either one of these to come into, in there? Well, the one thing I didn't mention is when Elderbrock did this Torker 2, the other, before they ever came up with their Super Victor here, they had a Victor Junior, which you can still buy to this day. It made a blend where they decided, hey, let's make a curve here, but let's not make it so high because we still try to get some hard carb height. So what they did is they kicked the carb pad down at an angle. So it would go at like a slope down. So it fit underneath people's hoods. And then also um, it had a better uh, uh, curve to it. So better line of sight. The runner length got a little bit longer than the uh, torquer stuff and it was a much better package. So when these don't work because of the height, Victor Jr. or because Wyan thought the same thing. Wyan's like, this isn't working. Let's try something different. Let's give it a little bit of curve. They had a Team G. So look for that one. Those have a much taller, a much shorter height than these two. So they're not going to make, they won't make the power of these two. I'll tell you right up. Victor Jr. and the Team G won't make the power of these but they will clear your stock hood. I don't know. They will have a better hood clearance than most other ones. And if you're turning lower RPMs, you're not gonna see as much advantage uh, with these bigger ones as the smaller ones. So uh, that might sound a little confusing. In other words, these are, will be better all through the RPM range, but the difference between the two, say a, you know, a Team G and a Victor Junior is those, those ones will be, 
small gains, these will be smaller gains over those other manifolds up to a, like 6,500 RPM, then the gains, or 6,000, then the gains get more. So if you're on a lower RPM engine, you won't see the full potential of these anyway. They still will make more power than the Team G and Victor Jr., but not enough to warrant it if you've already got them and you're worried about hood clearance and I really don't want a cow. Get the idea? I know it kind of seemed a little confusing, but um, I'm just trying to get this out. Now, that's really all I have for today's video, just about line of sight and how bad that one sucks. So avoid those, because I, I still see people putting these on engines because they got them for cheap. Um, don't, so unless you're, give, unless you're trying to sell a motor and just getting rid of it, that's about it. Uh, or you have to in case of rules. So anyway, uh, that's this. Now I know some of you are wondering, oh, man, I was really hoping you do that LS head. I just haven't had time. It's been a really busy week, so, and it's only Tuesday. But anyway, there's that. But I've got one more little piece of tech for you, and I wanna show you because I just feel like it. So give me just a second. So here's what little piece of tech for you. So I got a little bit of time. I didn't have any time really, to be honest with you. On Sunday, I hit the um, old F it bu button and decided I was just gonna mess with the truck for an hour. So I was work working more on the fuel lines. So I wanted to show you this. Look at that line right there. Do you see it? This is a 10 a.m. line. This is Summit's black nylon braided line for methanol. It's crap. Don't get it. That's kinked. Kinked from the factory. So then I was like, how bad could it be? Yeah, it takes very little movement. And it will kink. See? I, I've never had black nylon hoses ever done this before. But it's also the cheapest hose probably. I think it was like, my cost on it was like $103 for 20 feet, which I knew is like weird. Usually I run um, Red Horse, which that one's been great. I use it on the Camaro and it's pretty stiff. I ordered for Golia now. I'm returning this. But for your record, if you're getting this hose, don't. Go ahead and pop for something better. They have a premium one, but it's got a, like a red braid in it. I'm not a fan of that. I want it all black. So I'm telling you to avoid those. There's your little tech tip. That hose kinks. So that sucks. I'm kind of glad I figured it out. I just, uh, I wish I had gotten the red horse, but they were out anyway. I ended up getting it for Golia instead, which is a good hose. But just a lesson for you. If you're going to get a um, hose for your car, get the Summit Premium if you want to save a buck, but really just get the Fergolia. No one regrets ever spending more money on fuel line. So anyway, there's your little tip. You guys take care and thanks for watching.